Matthew 2. You know, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. It's interesting that wise men from the east, these were not Jewish people. These were not people who understood that there is a Messiah coming. These were wise men from the east and they were probably from Iran. We don't know that. They were probably from Persia. And typically in a nativity scene, we show how many wise men? Three. And we say kings. The scripture doesn't say they were kings. They could have been kings, but maybe they were kings who were wise or they were just regular people who were wise. You know, we always see three kings, but we need to definitely understand the scripture doesn't say that, but it's okay. I mean, it's a, it's a fun thing to see a nativity scene and we had an amazing nativity shadow play yesterday. Let's give a hand. It was amazing. Everything was amazing. Carol singing and the kids coming forward, the dances. I, I like the, uh, the kolatam. If I, uh, it's called dandia in uh, Gujarati or the Gujarat people call it dandia. And I don't know if we had any Gujaratis in the room, but I'm sure many enjoyed it and we enjoyed it. Wise men from the east. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? They were not even Jewish people, but they were able to recognize that his star, the word of God says, his star, for we have seen his star. Say with me, his star, his star in the east and have come to worship him. It's interesting to me that these people are just people who study, who are wise, who understand stars, who are looking for they were not looking for the Messiah, but they knew something unusual has happened and there has been born the king of the Jews and they took the journey to get to Jerusalem and Israel, if you will. It's interesting to me. You know, the wise men, some of the theologians say, they were scientific people, possibly. Incidentally, when we think about science, it comes from scientia, which is the Latin word for knowledge. Scientists were not divorced from theology and faith. You know, now people talk about, hey, this is science, this is faith. No, I think these were scientists who were also people of faith, who were looking and he saw, they saw the star and they understood that there was the king of the Jews being born at that time. It's interesting to see that. The most studious minds of the age would analyze things and they actually traveled. They were so compelled with this star that they traveled to see the king of the Jews, if you will. I don't know how long they traveled. It's probably hundreds of miles at least. I don't know and nobody knows how far they really came. In Isaiah 40 and 26, it says, look up into the heavens who created all the stars. He brings them out like an army, one after another. And I'm using the NLT version for emphasis. He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. That's how God created the stars. Think about the billions of stars and each one God called by its name. I mean, that is the immense wisdom of our God. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. Every star in the billions of galaxies out there has a name. Are you excited about that? Every star. And there is one star that carries his name. That's why the word of God says, in Matthew 2 and 2, for we have seen his star. It's interesting to me. He kept one star with his name, which will be seen when his son will be born. Vicky. It's amazing to me. Isaiah 40 and 22 says, God sits above the circle of the earth, 
The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. You know, what a great God we serve. You know, some of the scientists say there are 125 billion galaxies. Say with me, 125 billion, not stars, galaxies. It's just unimaginable. Another scientist says, 120,000 miles, 120,000 miles high, we can put a penny for each galaxy and it will go 120,000 miles high. Think about it. One penny for each galaxy and the height will be 120,000 miles high. And we get excited about tall skyscrapers. It's like a grasshopper in front of all, stack up all these galaxies with just a penny. The Milky Way, which is one of the galaxies, has 100 billion stars. I mean, this is just an amazing expanse of the universe, and that is the God we serve. But one of these stars is his star. You know, he gave names to all these billions of stars, and he kept one for himself, if you will. You know, if you see, there are various characters in the story that we read. You know, the first one is Herod. It's interesting, he was king and these wise men, of course, came to Herod first. To, they thought the king would know if another king has been born. That's why they came to him. But what does the word of God say? In Matthew 2 and 3, it says, when Herod the king heard this from the wise men, what happened? He was troubled. He thought there is competition for me. I am the king. Who is this other king? I need to know. I need to find out. And not only Herod was troubled, the word of God says, and all Jerusalem with him. I don't know why. They were waiting for the Messiah, Rabbi, right? They were waiting for the Messiah. But the word of God says in Matthew 2 and 3, not only Herod was troubled, but all Jerusalem with him. You know, people, though they were waiting for the Messiah, their hearts had gotten really a stony heart. Their hearts had become a stony heart. They were not really clear that it was time for the Messiah to be born. And Micah talks about how the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, Bethlehem Ephrata. And yesterday we read that. It was amazing. They were not ready. Even now, many of the Jewish people are waiting for the Messiah. You know, and even though a lot of theologians and researchers have said, you know, Jesus is the Messiah, they still don't believe. But I'm hearing there is a good momentum in many receiving the Lord in Israel and God is moving there and many, many evangelists and many churches are being planted as we speak, if you will. And then verse 7 says, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. So now he was trying to find out what happened and how did they find out that there is a king of the Jews is born. And the word of God says that he called the chief priests and the scribes together to understand it. It's interesting that the wise men from the east were looking for the king of the Jews, but the Jewish people themselves were not looking for the king of the Jews. And then Herod, with the Antichrist spirit, obviously wanted to find out where is this king of the Jews. And he told the wise men, well, let me know so that I can come and worship him as well. And he helped them to understand that Bethlehem was the place and they were heading to Bethlehem. And he goes, he tells the wise men, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. 
obviously that was a lie. And he just wanted to find out from these wise men where exactly Jesus is born so that he can do what he needed to do. You know, think about it. Even in the current culture, not much has changed. There is a lot of leaders you will see who are against Christianity, who are against even mentioning Merry Christmas. I'm glad we have put that behind us. You know, even still, people, even Christians say happy holidays. How many, how many have heard that happy holidays even from Christians? You know, when I hear from Christians, that's when I get disappointed. And even when somebody says happy holidays, you know what I say? Merry Christmas to you. Go for it. We are talking about a historical figure who came to save the human race. And if somebody is trying to not mention Jesus, even in the context of a corporate culture, I would mention it. You choose to do what you want to do. You know, they're trying to silence the voice of the conservatives. That's what is going on in our culture right now. But as people of God, we should not align with that. You know, feel free to say, and I do that, and that's why I'm recommending to you. Somebody says, happy holidays, Merry Christmas to you. It's okay. It's okay. It's not offensive to say Merry Christmas. You know, let them do what they do, but I get disappointed when Christians tell me happy holidays. You know, if the others are saying that's what they are and that's fine. Do not have happy holidays in your vocabulary because the culture is representing Herod, literally, because it's an antichrist spirit trying to suppress the voice of biblical values, trying to suppress the voice of the people who are sharing the gospel on the streets, Brother Wilfred. You have done it for 35 years and won many, many souls, but we need to be there. Our voices need to be heard against this antichrist spirit and God has given us the authority to trample our serpents and scorpions. And that's what we need to do. We cannot step back. See, the churches are stepping back. Not only stepping back, they're embracing, in some cases, the Antichrist spirit. It's, I mean, if you have read some articles about the woke culture and the church and all that, I'll not go there. But we are the people who need to speak against it. There are Bible colleges in America that are teaching CRT theory and all that. Bible colleges. We cannot embrace the Antichrist spirit. We cannot embrace the mindset of Herod. They want to kill biblical values. They want to kill the teachings of the Bible. And what do we get? We removed prayer in the 60s, and now instead of truancy being the key problem in schools, it's drugs and addictions and sexual immorality. That's what we get to remove the Bible from the schools, to remove the prayer from the schools. If we embrace the Antichrist spirit, what else can we expect? So we must be the voices as parents. We must become the voices, be part of your school boards. Represent your school boards. Do not just send your children to public schools and step back because there is a lot of damage happening as we speak in those schools. We must go and attend the meetings that happen. School board meetings, you can be people who attend, I think, as observers. Make sure you know your rights. Make sure what they are teaching your kids. We need to understand because the Antichrist spirit is there in the schools. Today I heard from a friend recently, Brother Wilfred, 100,000 parents in California are willing to move from public schools to another school. Right now, today, this I heard last week on a leader's Zoom call. 100,000 parents. Many are launching schools, Simon. In fact, they asked me, do you want to launch a school? And I'm meeting them soon. But the point is, as parents, 
we need to guard against the antichrist spirit and private schools and christian schools are not exempt by the way it's just a little lesser so we need to have our eyes open for the antichrist spirit that wants to kill biblical values it's the herod spirit that is going on and their goal is to reduce the impact of christianity to corrupt the church and it's unfortunate they have been successful to a certain extent it's unfortunate because of the lgbtq agenda in churches now you know it is it is what it is but we have to fight back the culture the antichrist spirit is in our culture and they they think that they can destroy christianity and many have tried it in the history it will never happen because the word of god says in isaiah 9 and 7 of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end it cannot happen even if they try the hardest which they are doing they themselves will be destroyed but the kingdom of god is ever expanding of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end this is the time to give a wonderful hand clap to the lord you know it is a battle do not be people who just sit and observe it's not the time for that especially in the context of schools for your children be on the campus praying i know some of you are doing that christy is doing that you're right there and praying but we need to fight back don't just sit back and observe what the enemy is doing see we have the capability to remove the impact of the enemy because god has given us that raj so we need to know what is being taught for our children even at a very young age make sure you understand go and talk to the principal set up a time you know talk to them say i'm concerned about this i'm going to talk to other parents about this if there is something questionable because that's what your kids are learning the environment is corrupt and the antichrist spirit is alive and well but we must fight back we cannot just step back and observe the damage the enemy is doing let's pray for it lord we pray that our parents even in a blessing church and people those who are watching Lord I pray that they will stand up they'll attend the school board meetings lord they'll be there raising their voices for biblical values lord and they'll be praying intercessors will be praying at our schools lord jesus do a mighty work in jesus mighty name we pray amen the second set of people who were there were the chief priests and the scribes think about it these are the chief priests who is born the king of the jews the messiah they have been waiting for yet even after sharing with king herod that the king of the jews is going to be born in bethlehem they didn't care it's like i remember you know i used to teach at a bible college it's a university it was a university i should say and i know some of the professors used to do research rabi research and publish papers you know that's what professors do but then we miss we miss the important message when you are focused just on research praveen think about it you know you are doing your phd and you are researching you are publishing papers you're excited but then you miss the simple message of christmas you miss the simplicity of the faith that's not what we need to be doing it's it's unfortunate but people especially who are teaching other students are themselves not there in terms of their walk you know it's like the chief priests and the scribes they were focused on research they said yeah i know the messiah is going to be born in bethlehem but the messiah is born they didn't even care the wise men came from the east they were not even jewish people they saw his star and they moved hundreds of miles even thousands of miles maybe you know we don't know when 
the wise men reached. And obviously, nativity scene shows the shepherds and the kings are the wise men. But that was not what really happened. You know, the shepherds went there immediately, but the wise men, probably it says, Jesus was a young child at that time. So we don't know. Maybe it was six months. Maybe it was more. I don't know. I didn't do research to find out exactly how old Jesus was at that time. It's interesting how different groups of people respond. You know, how Herod was thinking about his own self, saying, I am the king. I need to destroy this new king that has been born. And the chief priests and scribes, scribes actually write down all the scriptures and manuscripts. That's their work. So they were more like the researchers in the current Bible colleges in America. It's unfortunate, not all of them, but there is many who are just striving to publish papers. And they missed the Messiah that was born. It's interesting to see that. And then the wise men, I appreciate their heart. They came all the way. And how even God showed them in a dream, do not go back to Herod. You know, they worshipped the Lord when they saw Jesus and brought him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, the gold signifies really royalty, and that shows that Jesus was the king, and he's the king of kings for us. And frankincense really represents worship that we worship him in spirit and in truth, and these wise men worship Jesus. And myrrh really represents burial. You know, it really says that the Messiah was born to die on the cross to save the human race. You know, it's amazing how even these wise men who were not Jewish, who, were, who did not understand that a Messiah was supposed to come, they saw his star and knew that the king of the Jews is born. It's amazing. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You know, that's what happened to these wise men. They were seeking the truth, and they found the Messiah was coming. When you search for me with all your heart, I'm sure they were searching with all their heart. You know, what is our lesson from this? We see Herod there. We see the chief priests and scribes there. We see the wise men there. We see the people of Jerusalem. Even they were troubled. Though they were waiting for the Messiah, you know, it's interesting. Not only Herod was troubled, but why should the people of Israel be troubled when a prophecy was being fulfilled? You know, their hearts had become cold. That was the problem. They were no longer really waiting for the Messiah. They were about their own lives. You know, they were probably buying gifts for each other. They were, they were busy making uh, some food. They were busy educating their children. They didn't care about the relationship with God. Their hearts had gone cold. And we see that in America. Many families, so many people, even in the mall outreach, Sister Lindsay, so many times you have mentioned that there are people who, whose parents probably were pastors or were going to church, but their children are not going to church. Or there are people who used to go to church, and now they do not. So many of them we meet, even as we go about our lives, so many of them. I used to go to church. Have you heard that statement, I used to go to church? Who, who has heard it? Raise your hand. Okay. Tell them you need to go to church. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> there are so many of them. It's just unreal. And their life is messed up. They, you don't see the peace in their heart. They, you don't see the joy. You know. And uh, we need to be the mouthpiece. We need to be the mouthpiece. We need to be wise. You know. The word of God says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, God is expecting us to be his mouthpiece. God is expecting us to be his fragrance. God is expecting us to be his salt. You know, to add flavor to the lives of others. You know, 
the gospel message is so simple and so impactful. You know, it's easy to share the love of God. Just take the time to sow a seed. Ask God, what should I tell this person? God will clearly tell you. And when should I tell this person? Keep praying for the people around us. And at the right time, I know you are praying for the people who came yesterday. That's why they came. If we invite them without prayer, they won't come. I can tell you that. And I know you all were praying. And that's why these friends came. And you are being a good example when the Lord says, you are the light of the world. We need to share the light of the gospel. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, even when America was founded, you know, William Bradford said that America will be a city on a hill. You know, and America is a city on a hill, has been a city on a hill, even today, funding so much of the missions globally. And so much resources have been drawn from America to bless other nations. Even today, despite the challenges that our own nation faces, despite the debt that we have raked up, and despite what is happening in the current administration, still the church is supporting many, many nations, many nations. But I think it's time to focus on America. You know, when we have so many challenges, when we see thousands of people homeless in San Francisco, when we see homeless people in San Jose, Jenny, even as we drive, we see so many homeless encampments. I heard LA has 100,000 homeless today. I think that number is correct. And some of the streets as you walk in Los Angeles are stinking. It's so sad. You know, this is not the America I knew from a couple of decades ago. So definitely there has been an attack of the enemy to reduce the power of the, our nation. And we need to be concerned about it. God has blessed us immensely, but we need to also think about how to bless the nation back. We need to be a city on a hill. We need to be people who share the gospel. That is what is missing. It's interesting that we can solve the problem. We can definitely solve the problem. Psalm 67 and 1 says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. You know, so that we can be a light to others as you all have been even yesterday and continue that. I just want to encourage you. You are doing it. And I thank God for everyone in the Blessing Church. Everyone who took the time and prayer to pray for your friends, to invite them. You know, it's not easy for them. Think about it. But they came. We thank God for them, for each one who came yesterday. And I, I really believe they are going to accept the Lord soon. And they're going to be part of our church even, God willing. But the key is they need to be discipled, you know, consolidation. You know, it's important. Win, consolidate, disciple, and send. I think now we are trying to get that uh, phrase. Let's say it together. Win, consolidate, disciple, and send. We need to put it on our website. That is how we are moving forward for 2023. Brother Wilfred, we need your help in winning and consolidation. And let's work together to touch this Bay Area. It will never be the same again. It only takes one vision to touch an entire nation. And I believe God has chosen us to touch America. And each one, I believe, is going to be an amazing leader in the kingdom. Each one will be used in a mighty way. Because if we have to touch 330 million people, we need leaders who will rise up and touch millions. And God is going to use us. This is a season of leadership development. This is a season for understanding how to lead and really uh, get engaged in this warfare and in this work. And I know the Blessing Church is engaged. I know that because as a small team, we can deliver a global conference, Ravi. It is, it is not heard of. Let's give a hand to our small team that can do great things because we have a great God. You know, it's not because we are talented. Of course, God has given us talent, but we are able to execute. Even yesterday, we were shorthanded. 
but God enabled us to execute with excellence the best way we could. There is a lot to do, but God is going to help us. You know, and it's an exciting journey. Think about it. When we are a city on a hill, it's an exciting journey. When we are impacting other lives, it's an exciting journey. You know, as we impact other lives, God will bless you. Seek first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added. What is on your list for the next blessing? God will give it to you even before that time. You know, God wants his people to prosper. God wants his people to prioritize the right things. You know, we have to prioritize. Prioritize God and his work. The rest will fall in place. And the peace of God will be in your heart. Even perfect peace will be in your heart. And perfect harmony wherever you go. And, and great help from the Lord. God will send the people that you have been looking for months in your path. You know, and teach you how to, how to share, what to share. Even hear audibly from the Lord. Do this, do that. You know, God will do it. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's go for the decree first and then we'll pray and close. Let's see. Oh, did I send it? <laughs> Ravi, you have to create the decree now. I'll read it. I forgot to send the document. But I'll read it. I think I, I like the decree. I like the fact that we decree in every service. Let's repeat after me. I'll be like the wise men who sought Jesus and found Jesus. I'll be like the wise men who worshipped Jesus. I'll be like the wise men who brought gifts to Jesus. I'll be a witness for the Lord in my city, in my county, in my country and in the nations of the world. Let's pray. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you for the wise men. How they understood seeing your star and knowing that the King of the Jews was born. Jesus was born, the Messiah was born and they started a long journey Lord to worship you. Let us be like the wise men searching, looking and helping others to search and look for Jesus and be like that star who guided the wise men to you. Let us be the light salt of the world to bring the people to you. Use each and every one. Lord, to win, consolidate, disciple, and send. Help us to live our lives like that, with that mission, Lord. Bless each one, Lord. Even in the busy life in Silicon Valley, you are going to raise up Daniels. Daniel was busy running 108 nations. Still he found time to pray three times a day, to impact others, to pray for the nation, to repent on behalf of the nation. Thank you that Daniel is a role model for our G12 adoption, Lord Jesus. And when we do that, we'll be Daniels wherever we are. Thank you, Master. Raise up mighty leaders from the Blessing Church, Lord, who will be counselors to the head of the companies, Lord, because we are wise and the wisdom that comes from you you will give us without reproach, even as we ask. We ask for wisdom for each one of us, Lord. We thank you and praise you. Thank you, Master. Some of you watching might be wondering, I want to be like these wise men searching for the truth. Maybe you have a nudge in your heart to receive this Messiah, Jesus, as your personal Savior today. I'm going to pray a prayer and you can just pray together with me and you can be a new creation today and you can start becoming wise because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, I do not know the Messiah. I do not know Jesus who was born in Bethlehem, who is the Son of God, who was sent by the Father. And whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I am believing in Jesus today, and I want to have the gift of everlasting life. If you agreed with that prayer, then you are a new creation. You know, be part of a Bible-believing church, and you need to be discipled. So continue to be part of a church, read the word of God, and you can grow in the Lord, you can grow in wisdom, and God will give you amazing wisdom to do everything that he has called you to do. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.